everyone from across our benefice and beyond. Welcome to this service of the word for the second Sunday of Easter. We will be reflecting upon Jesus's appearance to his disciples on the road to Emmaus. So it seemed fitting that we will finish our service with a single, simple agape or breaking of bread. I am joined here by Rob and John who will be saying the responses which will appear on your screens. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Faithful One, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and share our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now some moments of silence to come to God as we are to lay down our burdens, our worries and concerns, to confess our failure to trust him or to speak of him to others in their need. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14 and verses 36 to 41. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who had accepted this message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading is from Luke Gospels chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 
using the message translation. The Road to Emmaus That same day, two of them were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognise who he was. He asked, What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, What has happened? They said, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death, and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, So thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer, and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he, he was going on, but they pressed him, Stay, have supper with us. It's nearly evening, the day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognised him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road as he opened up the scriptures for us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened. The Master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that had happened on the road and how they recognised him when he broke the bread. Thanks be to God. Faith is a journey, and I'm somewhere on that road, something I have heard on the lips of many non-church people over the last few years. This beautiful story of the road to Emmaus is profoundly the story of journeying from doubt and despair to certainty and hope, a realisation, a light dawning. How did that couple on the Emmaus Road move from fear and doubt to certainty and hope? What can we as a church learn about how the risen Lord meets with us and how we can accompany others on that journey of faith, enabling them to experience the presence of our risen Lord too? First, some principles from this passage, and then something of my own experience. 
the stranger came and accompanied these disciples in their doubts. He asked questions. He listened to their story. He discovered their disappointments. He had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Jesus listens to it all whilst walking in the wrong direction, away from Jerusalem. And the rest of the disciples gathered there. But he meets them in their despair and listens in order to understand. Jesus then opens up the word of God. He explains the scriptures. We are not always confident to do this, but the word of God has its own power and authority to convict hearts. And we need to be people, to be a church who will graciously offer truth, not in a way which is judgmental or threatening, but in a way which offers life and peace. Jesus then accepts their hospitality. He makes time to go and spend time at their table, to fellowship with them. He is the guest in their home. Often we want people to come into church, to be our guests. But perhaps God calls us to go to them and receive at their table. Finally, in that moment of shared thanksgiving, as Jesus breaks bread, there is an acknowledgement of God's generosity, a sharing of thankfulness, which reaches right back into the bounty of the Garden of Eden and right forward to the banqueting table in heaven. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. And then he disappears from their sight. How often, when I am asked to say grace at a wedding supper or a community event, do I feel that this is the point of greatest connection with the Creator? In order that these two disciples might recognise him in his risen glory, Jesus went out of his way to walk alongside them, listening to their doubt and despair, to offer words of truth from scripture, to accept hospitality and share fellowship. Can we in church learn from these principles as we seek to meet others where they are on the journey of faith? And let us also be ready to meet the risen Lord in unexpected guises and learn new truths about our faith. This past month, I have thought a lot about the pilgrimage I undertook in 2017 with a small group from Stafford to London to pray for, for the NHS, finishing in the chapel of St Thomas's London, where Boris Johnson was recently in ITU. We had scheduled stopping points through each day where people could join us to walk a section. Sometimes a group joined and we were encouraged. Often we were alone. On the longest day, 22 miles, nearing the outskirts of Northampton, the sky was growing dark and menacing. On the car park of a deserted Methodist church stood a lone figure with a backpack. I will call her Jenny. She had seen the poster about our prayer walk on the notice board of the chapel in the psychiatric hospital where she'd been an inpatient for six months and worked out that she could join us as she was having a trial overnight stay at home for that 24 hours. She purchased several packets of biscuits to share with us and walked the remaining four miles to Northampton Hospital. In the last mile, 
the heavens opened and it bucketed with rain. Jenny was able to guide us into the side door and walk about a half a mile through hospital corridors to the chapel. We had barely stripped off our wet jackets to start the worship, then she slipped quietly away to catch her bus home. Five days later, in the chapel of St Thomas's Hospital, Jenny rejoined us. She had grown in confidence through our meeting. The hospital had discharged her, and she travelled to London to complete the walk with us. Jenny was for me the unexpected stranger, the face of Jesus on the road. And if we had walked the whole 180 miles to see her healed, I would have done it again. I learnt in a profound way that our faith is not about attracting the masses, but ministering to the individual, the one person in whom I see Jesus that day. I can vividly recall the times of thanksgiving, the fellowship we shared around so many tables, and the prayers that were offered for the NHS and for the government, especially that they would come to value our health service as the hands and feet of a healing God. Last week, listening to Boris's speech, I am wondering if God has answered our prayers in the strangest of ways. When we faithfully pray and trust God for his answers, we may find ourselves walking with a stranger who turns out to be our Lord. I'm not sure what the next few weeks will bring for any of us. But may we learn to see Christ in unexpected people and places and to be as Christ to others when he needs us to listen to their fears and disappointments, to walk alongside them and share fellowship, if only in our phone conversations or emails. Finally, may we grow in our pilgrimage of prayer as we learn to walk alongside our risen Lord and pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And now Carol will lead us into further prayers. Lord our God, giver of joy and life, you have called us to know you and to love you. You, Lord, are our strength and our shield, our protector and our joy. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer for those in need and those not able to pray for themselves. We pray for your church throughout the world for all who teach your word and for all those who work tirelessly in your name. We bring before you, Lord, the troubles and the sadness of our world, for those countries short of food, water and those living with the effects of war, for people displaced and far from home. We pray for our world leaders and ask if you will give them wisdom in their decision-making, that they may remember all who are in need. We pray for our own government as they make decisions concerning COVID-19. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. Let us pray for all those who are sick, from the coronavirus, those in hospital, and those who are ill at home. We give you thanks for all NHS workers and carers as they work tirelessly caring for the sick. We pray for those who have departed from us and we think especially at this time of those who have died alone, for families as they mourn their loved ones. In a moment's silence, let us name anyone known to us who is in sorrow, 
need or sickness, who needs God, God's blessing at this time. May they come to you and rest and be comforted in your presence. We pray for our benefice and for all who live and work within it. In the benefice cycle of prayer, we pray this month for Hinstock, for all families in the community. We pray for the school, for teachers and pupils, for Hinstock Manor and all who live and work there. We give thanks for the church and all who work hard to support it. In the shadow of your wings, we will sing your praises, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all who are working to keep the country going, providing food, deliveries, medical supplies, the utilities and our farmers, for volunteers and good neighbours. Help us to love one another as you love us. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. We bring ourselves before you now. We thank you for all that we have, for safe homes, for our families and friends. Lord, our days feel unfamiliar and challenging, but you bring hope even in the toughest times. You are always with us. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your peace. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Having shared our worries with God, heard his word explained, I now invite you, like Cleopas and his friend, to share an agape meal with Jesus. If you have bread and wine or fruit juice, go and make your table ready whilst we sing or listen to the hymn, Jesus Stand Among Us, and I will prepare our table here. Jesus stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Be a sweet agreement at the meeting of our eyes. Oh Jesus, we love you. So we gather here. Join
Welcome back. Rob has joined me at the table for this simple agape or love feast. Please join in with the responses that appear on the screen and then share as we are sharing. We have bread and wine, gifts of the good earth, enough for all if we can share. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the many blessings in our lives and ask that you would bless us now as we share your good gifts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Loving God, you provide enough for everyone. The earth is fertile, fruitful and abundant. But we are sometimes greedy, wasteful and selfish. Many go hungry despite our plenty. Many are left outside while we enjoy the feast. But on the hillside, in the wilderness, with 5,000 or more hungry people, Jesus took bread, the bread they had, broke it and gave thanks to you. He shared the bread so that no one should be left out. And they all ate and were satisfied. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Hurting God. You hurt with our pains, you weep with our tears. When you see how we struggle and suffer, you long for our peace. Yet we so often make war, you long for our healing and wholeness, yet we so often turn away from you. But at the wedding in Cana, when the wine ran out, Jesus asked them to fill the empty jars with water, and by your grace, water became wine, sadness was turned to joy, and all were able to share in the best wine of all. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Dreaming God, you long for us to dream your dream of a world at peace, a people made one, a feast for all where bread is broken and shared with companions on the road, where wine is blessed and shared with all who are hurting, and all are caught up together in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Bread for the world to share. Best wine, save till now. Gracious God. We thank you for your abundant love in creation, your compassionate healing touch in our hurting, your inspiration for our venturing. Thank you for bread and wine we share. Give us grace to follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our blessing and closing hymn, let us take a moment to think of those we are called to accompany through the week ahead, the people we will phone or message, those we will pray for, known and unknown to us. Let us be ready to meet Jesus in unexpected places and ways in the kindness of a stranger or the words of our daily reading, that our hearts may be strangely warmed.
thank you to all of you who have contributed <coughs> to this service. To John Naylor for the music, to Carol, Mike and Dick, and those working tirelessly to complete and edit. Finally, I invite you to join our young people as they lead worship tonight at 7pm on the theme of thankfulness. God, who longs for our healing, meet us in our hurting with your compassion. Jesus, who stands with us, touch us in our brokenness, that we may be made whole. Spirit, who anoints us with power, fill us with your grace, that we may reach out to others. And the blessing of God Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. Amen.